What's up with you? Fata video. We be full. Stuffle Evolution team. We got Stuffle and we got Beware. So I thought I'd do this team and have the shinies and the normals to make up a team of four. We got a lot of abilities to cover today. We got Fluffy, Klutz, Cute Charm, and Unnerved. So some really cool abilities. So I made some move sets up and I incorporate these abilities into the team. If you do want to check me out on Twitch, people, this is where I do all my live streams. Links in the description of the video. And let's get into both of these battles. I thought, stuff it, I might as well do this team. Sorry, I had to make that pun. The first battle here we got is against Rogue, and we got a 4v6 battle. Now, I'll go through my movesets and, of course, tell you what abilities these had, too. So, the first Pokemon is going to be Nidoking. King. Always like Nidoking King Shine. Looks very, very good. And the first Pokemon we got here is going to be Beware. So, this is my special set, and trust me, uh, special Beware is pretty bad. This has got the Unnerve ability, obviously preventing any berries from being consumed in its presence. So, I've got Focus Mist. Round, work up, and pain split. I've got throat spray as the item, and I've got max speed and max special attack, modest nature. But where has actually got a decent amount of speed here? So with Nidoking, it's actually going to set up a couple of entry hazards. Now, this thing was actually kind of difficult to do because not only was it only four Pokemon, it had quite a few weaknesses. So boosting my special attack by using round, which is really, really good. Now I can go for either a Dynamax round or go for another workup. I was thinking about this for a little while. Like, well, I don't think round's going to do a lot of damage here. Focus Master is probably going to miss, let's be real. So let's go for another workup. I think Nidoking is just going to be setting up entry as it's like... Maybe it's got like Stealth Rock, Toxic Spikes times two, and maybe something else. I don't really know what they're going for here. So setting up another workup, I've got plus two and special attack. Things are going pretty good at the moment. And I must say too, Beware Shiny is very, very nice. It's nice and yellow. It looks looks good on it. Suits it. So we got a Smart Strike from the uh, Nino King here. Doesn't do that much damage to Beware. Beware's pretty bulky, and they get a crit. So like, okay, uh, I expected it to do less than that. So obviously that's why that happened. So going for another workup here. This is a great opportunity to get like a a lot of special attack boost here uh, against the Nidoking, King. And we've got like a lot of Pokemon to still beat. So I thought what I should do here is I could go for a Max Strike, take the Nidoking King out and try and give myself maybe an early little uh, advantage into this battle. But I thought if they do Dynamax their next Pokemon after the Nidoking King does faint, I might be at a bit of problems because I've got Focus Blast and a normal type move. So you can actually get wall pretty easy, especially if any, uh, you know, ghost types creeping around. So go for Dynamax Beware. It's big and it's yellow. And here comes Stomping Tantrum. So that was an interesting set. I wonder what they... Oh, I know what they did. So with Stomping Tantrum, say they set up Stealth Rock first. Then they could go for Stealth Rock again, make it fail. Then go for Stomping Tantrum to hit for double base power. So pretty nice. So that's going to be the end of the Nidoking. King. And the next Pokemon is going to be uh, the Persian. Oh, it's a shiny too. You can hardly tell with shiny Persian. Man, that's a, that's a disappointing shiny. So I can go for Max Knuckle here. But I sort of feel like it's bait because they know, obviously, they've got a fighting move. Persian is going to go for a track. I'm like, uh-oh, this is very, very bad. So Blair is going to fall in love with the Persian. And uh, it's going to actually get immobilized by love there. I nearly stopped myself. So I could go for a Max Striker. Any move is going to take Persian out. Let's be real. So I was hoping that I didn't get immobilized by love again. Persian's going to go for U-turn. So U-turn and attract. That's not a combination you use very often. You know what I mean? Because usually with attract, You'd want to stay into the matchup. So very, very interesting. So in comes Big Bat here. It's going to be Noifan. I went for Max Strike. I guess I was expecting like a fighting type move. And Big Bat is going to get one shot. So bye-bye, Big Bat. Uh, you weren't on the field for very long. That's the end of my Zyden Max, though. So next Pokemon is going to be Zorak. And they didn't disguise Zorak. I'm, hmm, this is interesting. Now, once again, if you can sense a theme team or something like that, let me know in the comment section. I'm not really sure. I can't really pick something at the moment. I thought it might be a Giovanni one at the start, but it's not. So I'm going to go for Focus. Blast here against Zoroark, and it's going to go for fake tears. I'm like, wow, um, this is going to drop Zoroark at plus three in special attack. Now, my special defense has been dropped by two stages. Focus Blast is not going to miss, and Zoroark is going to get one shot at wow. So that's the end of three Pokemon already with my Beware. Are we going to get a Beware sweep here? Next Pokemon is going to be Nido Queen. So we've had Nido King, now we've had Nido Queen. Now, Nido Queen can really only be hit by round here. I could go for Pain Split too. I thought, let's go for Pain Split. I think, like, you know, maybe I'll get outsped here. And it's going to be a Dive Ball Nido Queen as the Dynamax Pokemon. Now, I don't really know what sort of strategy this Nido Queen might be running. I was trying to think what they'd be doing with Toxic Spikes, other than, you know, putting Toxic Spikes on the field. 
Maybe one of them's got like Benno Shock or something like that. I don't really know. So Nidoqueen can get pretty powerful if it does get any max oozes up. But once again, I don't really know what sets are going to be here. So going for the Pain Spit on Nidoqueen, outspeeding it. I don't really get a lot of health back, which sucks because I was hoping that Nidoqueen would actually outspeed me. Uh, now Nidoqueen is going to go for a max knuckle. Ouch, that did a lot of damage and almost took my beware out in one shot. So he's got plus one in attack. So like, okay, this is quite threatening when you think about it because the rest of my team is all weak to fighting type moves. That was another thing too, like fighting type Pokemon could come in and absolutely roll my team. So I go for Pain Spit there, getting a nice sizable chunk of damage this time, which is great. Uh, Nidoqueen's going to go for a Max Quake, boosting its special defense, and of course doing a fair bit of damage to Beware 2, taking it out. I thought they may go for another Max Knuckle, but it could be a special set too, so I don't really know at this stage. So bye-bye Beware. I've got three more Pokemon remaining, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to my second Beware. This was a horrible, horrible meme set, but in this case, I actually got successful with it. So I've got Klutz, right? What Klutz does, it actually uh, prevents the item, uh, the Hell item, from actually working, except if it's like Major Brace. Now, you can't fling it, so I thought the only way to get rid of this horrible ability is to go for roleplay, and I came up with the strategy, right? I thought, if I gave myself weakness policy, Klutz weakness policy, only on Pit Rush right? Got rid of my ability, in this case, and then have a super effective move activate weakness policy and get a boost and it all happened i was like oh this is awesome so i swapped the abilities around there or i gave it the role play and uh, i'm gonna get a boost in my stats so special attack and attack by one stage this is a physical set with drain punch danker slow riot area waste and role play as you got to see and i've got max speed jolly nature and i've got max attack so a pretty scary set with a, uh, a weakness policy up the only bad thing is i did sustain a fair bit of damage and i'm also poisoned now i can't go for drain punch because it's going to fail to take it out, and I've got air airways. I wasn't really sure here what I should do. I mean, obviously, this is my most powerful move. Um, I have to really go for that. But I wasn't sure I'd actually be able to take out the Nidoqueen. Queen. So go for the Darker Slayer in there, spinning around there, and Nino Queen tanks it so, so well. And then it's got a red card. You wouldn't read about it. So I get automatically swapped out there after receiving my weakness policy boost. Man, it's just one of those days, you know what I'm saying? So in comes Stuffle. It's going to get dragged out, and I'm going to be poisoned here. So Nidoqueen doesn't have too much help. It's got double kick. I was like, ah, it is a physical set. And I got Q Charm activated. I was like, wow, that were the two hardest abilities on this team to actually use. So Q Charm has a 30% chance of activating uh, to infatuate the opposing uh, Pokemon with a contacting move of the opposite gen. So it's a pretty, uh, it's lucky, you know, it's, it's pretty much just a, a lesser version of a track, but in ability. So I was lucky to get that activated. So this is a Bind, Toxic, Rest, and Charm set. I thought about this for a sec. Well, I'm going to take a really risky play here, right? Nidoqueen gets immobilized. Like, great. So I'm going to go for bind here. Nidoqueen is in a bind right now. And I was thinking maybe I could get that bind up, squeeze Nidoqueen a little bit, and then I might be able to get a rest off here and heal myself up. I knew it was a really, really risky play, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to go for it. Sometimes you've got to make that risky play, you know? Because things got to happen. So I thought about going for charms. Like, nah, let's go for rest. That's going to be better, right? So Nidoqueen is going to have the attraction here. And it got immobilized twice in a row. I was very, very lucky. So this stuff will work absolutely wonders. Like, I was extremely lucky there. Not only getting cute charm to activate, but getting the infatuation back to back twice in a row, allowing me to take out the Nidoqueen and heal myself all the way back up to full health. So, wow, that was so lucky. So, that's the end of the Nidoqueen. So, there's a Persian left. That's the next Pokemon. Oh, wait, no, this is another Persian. So, there's a, a Lola and a normal Persian. So, that's the other uh, Pokemon that's seen. So, swapping out Stuffly. I don't really know what this is going to do and going into Beware. Didn't have a lot of health left. I thought, let's just swap it in and see what Persian is going to do. It's going to go for Fake Out. So, it's going to try and clap me. It did a little bit of damage there and Beware is going to faint to the top. That's no biggie. At least I sort of have an idea what kind of set it is, yo. I so that's a speedy physical attack. At this stage, you never know. There's always uh, different things that could happen. So swapping into stuff on out. This is a pretty cool set. It's very, very bulky. So taking some stealth rock damage and toxic spikes, of course. I've got a bulk up. Rest, Sleep Talk, and Mega Kick set. Mega Kick is something base power. The only problem with it, it is pretty kind of you know, bad in accuracy. So I'm running this one as a max health, max special defense set. And I've got the Fluffy ability. Fluffy ability is really, really good and makes Pokemon so, so bulky. So with Fluffy Everlight as the item, it's very, very tanky. So the idea is to set up as many bulk ups as possible. Also, I want to point this out as well. I, I did this in another video, but if you notice, if you look at the Stuffles, uh, 
but it's got a ticket on it like it, it, that little ticket there underneath its tail and a lot of people actually didn't notice that when I pointed out and someone pointed it out to me one time it's like oh I'm gonna point this out to other people so it's got a little ticket so you know how you play like a skill tester a uh, skill tester is like a, you have like a glass cabinet right and they've got all those toys inside of it and there's like a, a, a claw like a prize claw and you can control the claw like it can go back and forth um, and then you get one shot of getting it over the toy and then you press the button for it to go down and you know, the claw grips the uh, the prize, right? And pulls it up and uh, you get the prize. Obviously, it's a lot harder than that. But yeah, I always remember that I grabbed the toy. It was a pink elephant. You wouldn't read about it. And I picked it up by the ticket. Like, it literally had the, the claw. Got it under the tippy tip of the claw, sliced in between the t in between the ticket, the, you know, the little loop in the ticket, and it carried it all the way there. It was, it was such an achievement for like, a, I don't know, like a 10 year old kid. It was a complete fluke, I'll, I'll be honest, mate. It was really, really cool. So anyway, uh, back to the battle here. I'll tell you about my uh, skill tester uh, stories. Has anyone ever tried a skill tester? Have you had any luck? I'd like to hear your stories in the comment section. So anyway, back to the battle here. I'm going to go for Sleep Talk here, and I'm just pretty much boosting my stats and trying to get some mega kicks to land. I love when stuff will attack, so it sort of flowers its little legs, and man, that got dropped hard. So that definitely wasn't a, uh, a fur coat set. So next Pokemon is going to be Persia. It's the last one there. I figured all I've got to do is land a couple of, maybe one to two mega kicks, and it's going to go down. Like, it's, it's, it's stab. It's got a lot of base power already. So Persia's going to try and shut me down there with Taunt, which is okay because I've got enough uh, I've got enough attack to actually take it out. So go for a mega kick and purge it almost goes down, which is very, very close. However, I was thinking, wait, wait a second. Earlier on, that Persian, I think that I had like, I was like, I swear that I had uh, a life orb, and it did. It took itself out with its life orb, and that's the end of the game there. So interesting game. Thank you for the battle, Ro. And that, you know, that's some luck there with the weakness policy roleplay set working and the cute charm activating right when I needed it. Like, those two things really did change the battle around, and that beware gave me a very good start to the battle as well. Uh, let's get on to battle number two. This is against uh, Subbion. I think this is going to be our first Sword of Shield battle. And also, people, if you do enjoy the videos, please drop a like. That only takes one second. Really helps my uh, channel out and also helps you too because you get to see the, uh, you know, obviously, the videos in the subscription box. I want YouTube to hide them from you. You know how it goes these days. So we got uh, a Suicune lead, and I've got to beware Lee. Now, I thought for a second... Uh, you know what? I'm going to go for a roll today. And uh, it's going to be a physical squeaker. I was like, wow, a physical squeaker. I I'll give them some nice credit there. Unfortunately, I was thinking about going for Dynamax. Like, well, I don't know if I want to go for Dynamax now because it's going to kind of be slow. So uh, getting rid of the clutch and getting pressure, which is good. Putting some pressure on our uh, squeaker over there. And uh, squeaker, this is actually really, really funny. Because I thought that Suicune was going to be solely a physical set. And I know Suicune's physical moves are you know, pretty much off by heart. I mean, it's 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 a Pip Night video, right? Let's let's be real about that. This is oh, this is where I was contemplating go for Dynamax for a long time. I was like, uh, I could go for Max Airstream and get rid of that uh, you know that speed drop and then go for it again. It's it's got Air Slash. It's a mix set, and you know what's going to happen? My weakness policy is going to get active. And I was like, wow, and that was. These battles actually occurred back to back. So I got the weakness policy to activate on both of the buets, which I was really happy about. So go for Drain Punch in there, deciding against it. And that does a lot of damage to Suicune. Suicune's got a lot of natural bulk on the defensive side. Good health. You know, it's very, very bulky. But that was a nice chunk of damage. And not only did I good do like really good damage to it, I got a lot of health back from Drain Punch. Now I was starting to contemplate go for Dynamax. I was like, should I go at the max there, stream? I, I think they're going to go for Air Slash again. I'd really like thinking about it, you know? And then this weekend went for Bulldoze. Like, okay, good. I'm glad I didn't go for Dynamax out. I, I mean, even though I've got these boosts, I wouldn't be very, very fast because I've got negative two in speed. And even, say, if I went for Airstream, I still at negative one. So I'm glad I didn't Dynamax there. Plus, I can make use of Drain Punch too. So I can't, like, you know, restore my health with Max Knuckle, you know what I mean? So Drain Punch here was very handy. So that's the end of this weekend. Also, this is a 4v4 battle too, which is pretty cool. Our next Pokemon is going to be Inteleon. Now, there is a thing. I know they've got a theme team, and they did mention it, but it escapes me at the moment. So if you can guess what the nicknames or the theme team are, leave it below in the comment section too. So uh, I'm going to go for Drain Punch again. So here comes the Ice Beam from Inteleon right at the end of its finger. And I lived on 14 health and got the Drain Punch off as well, which is crazy. And that's going to take the Inteleon out in one shot because... Like, no, uh, Intelligent's not the bulkiest Pokemon in the world. So getting some nice health recovery. Uh, we're going to get a Beware Sweepy. I was like, man, maybe I, 
Maybe I should. Then, then again, if I died of Max, then I wouldn't have got any health recovery. See, you know, that was the right decision. So where comes the Rilla Boom? How do I say this? Oh, I'm not sure how to say this in name. Got, got, got Liup? Did I say it? No, I probably messed it up. Let's be real. So uh, Rilla Boom's going to go for an Earthquake. I was like, okay. Uh, earthquake's going to hit really, really hard. But I lived on five health. I was like, wow. I was actually managed to get the Aerial Ace off here. And almost taking out the Rillaboom, which is great. Um, obviously, I'm going to fake this turn, but I was very, very happy with how this set went. I mean, I know it's kind of standard just moves, but getting the role play and getting rid of the klutz and the weakness policy to activate is pretty cool, you know? So that's the end of Beware. And I actually got to use Klutz. I mean, you're probably thinking, well, what would you use Klutz for as an ability? Maybe it's it, it, it's it's good for stuff like Lopani with like Switcheroo and Choice Scarf, you know? So you're not locked into that item. That's one of the strategies you can use. Like, they're, they're, they're really like that, but they are gimmick in nature. So, you sort of... There's normally always a better ability. So, swapping in stuff there, and man, Rillaboom's going to take some nasty recoil. I managed to land a Mega Kick right on the drum, and that's going to be the end of the Rillaboom. So, they've only got one more Pokemon left, and it is going to be Cinderace. Now, I think this was after... A, was it a soccer player? I'm pretty sure it was, because I've seen this nickname before on Cinderace, so I'm assuming it's something to do with uh, soccer. We call it, in, in Australia, we call it soccer, you know, you kick the ball around and stuff like that. Uh, so that's going to go for a Iron Head, and it's going to have the uh, Libero too, so that's a good play, because, uh, you know, if it managed to live somehow without that crit, I would only be hitting with a normal type move, and it would be not very effective, so, you know... The Bureau is such a good ability. So we're going to go into stuff now. I've got two more Pokemon left. They haven't had a Dynamax. Though. That's what scared me because this thing is a very, very powerful Pokemon. So I've got Bind. I can't use Tox or anything like that because it's a Steel type. It's like, well, maybe they'll go for a different type move. I'll, I'll play a risk here. Let's go ahead and try that. And, you know, they may go for a Max Flare. So they went for Pyro Balls. Like, okay, good. My Toxic is now going to affect the, uh, you know, the Sin Race. Can I live this? Which is going to be interesting. And uh, here it comes. Here's a Pyro Ball. And I lived it very, very nicely, actually, too, which is good. And this is my cute charm set. I was a little bit worried about the you know, the fluffy one. You know, that, that's going to get hit by, by like a fire type move. So I managed to lift that and get a Toxic off, which is really, really good. I was, I was happy with that. I thought that would be better than going for a Bind because, you know, Bind could miss. You know, that could be bad. I could have, you know, I could have gone for a Charm there. I was tossing up between Toxic and uh, Charm. Now, the Cinderace is going to go for uh, Libero Iron Head again. Once again, changing its type, and that's going to be enough to take out my Stuffle. So, bye-bye, Stuffle. All I've got now left is my Beware. And I can tell you what, um, if Cinderace doesn't take me out quick, it's probably going to almost get out of the Toxic soon. So, maybe like two to three more turns, it'll be fine. So, this is the shiny one. I've got Focus Blast Round. That's it. I was like thinking, what can I do here? I mean, if let's be real. Cinderace has got a berry. It won't be able to use it. And I've got... Wait, I've got Dynamax. So, what am I talking about? So, I was like, okay... I saved my Dynamax for this moment. Scrap what I said earlier on. I do have Dynamax. So the cool thing is we both had the, our last Pokemon and we both Dynamax them at the same time. So it was sort of like the Dynamax Pokemon were going to be the, the deciding point of this game. So obviously I went for a Max Knuckle. That was my best play. Unfortunately, it was coming off a special move. So I wasn't going to boost my stats at all. And of course, it's going to be a G-Max uh, Cinderace here. So... Me thinking about this matchup, I was like, well, I believe they're going to go for G-Max or Dynamax. Isn't it? I didn't know whether it was going to be G-Max. So I thought, to, instead to go for the Max Knuckle on turn one of Dynamax, how about I go for a Max Guard and roll that Toxic another level? You know what I mean? And then maybe I could attack the next turn and then I have the option to go for Max Guard again. And then we might be out of Dynamax. You know, something like that. That was the strategy that was going through my head. Because at the moment, I was at a definite disadvantage. You know, Cinderace being... A very, very good Pokemon, and Libero too, and hitting very, very hard. So they went for the Max Airstream there, which is bad, because that's going to do a lot of damage. And now we've got some more toxic damage to Cinderace. This turn, I thought about going for Max Guard again, risking the double Scumbag Max Guard, but I didn't want to do it. I thought, it's better here that I get some guaranteed damage off. So here comes the Max Airstream, and that was... That was ugly. That did a lot of damage to me, almost taking me out in Dynamax. So, a very, very powerful Cinderace set. So, now I'm going to go for the Max Strike here. I was hoping I could drop its speed. That's why I went for that. And I did very good damage. I possibly could have done a little bit more with Max Knuckle. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I was hoping they would go for a Fire-type move so I could outspeed them. So, more Toxic damage. I was like, okay, good. I can go for a Max Guard this turn, you know. Things are working out pretty well here. 
Uh, the only thing that didn't work out well is I dropped the Cinderace's speed, but the Cinderace went for a flying time move. So it got its speed drop, but it got its speed back from the flying time move, you know? Uh, so we got a Max Guard there, another Libero. I think that was a Max Air or whatever attack. Any attack this Cinderace would throw at me now would actually take me out. So that's the last turn. Cinderace is going to fight in the next turn. The Toxic, I managed to actually stall it out all the way. The problem is I've only got a little bit of health here and Dynamax and Cinderace, you know, will be able to outspeed me. Maybe I, I definitely had a... I definitely would have... I'd say that all about better if they didn't max Airstream. And I could just finish it off with, like, even Round would have finished it off. So there goes. I think that was a Blaze Kick. And that's going to creep me for a little bit of extra salt. Hope you enjoyed both the uh, battles with the Stuffle Evolution team. A really cool Pokemon. I'll see you tomorrow. Ooh, April Fool's tomorrow. All right. Peace out, people.